the Lord. And if it is you today, oh, we praise your name, God, this morning. Lord, what a beautiful day. Lord, the sun is shining upon us. Lord, God, reminding us of what God, you love us, God, not by our performance or merit, Lord God, but because you are God. You love us in spite of ourselves, Lord. So, Father, we come before you, Lord God, knowing that we serve a mighty, powerful, awesome, loving, faithful, dependable, reliable, healing, saving, strengthening, and redeeming God. Father, this morning, God, we open our heart to you, Lord. Lord, we give you of ourselves, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to be here, God. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you're going to do, Lord. But, Father, we ask, O oh God, that you do only what you can do in our lives, God. Lord God, that we not live the same way we came in, God. Lord God, that we are, if we are sick, God, we look up to you, Jehovah. Oh, Rafa, our healer. Lord, if we are discouraged, God, we look on our God, out of God who give us strength. Your joy is our strength. Lord God, if we are, Lord God, discouraged, God, we look unto you, Lord God, as you that encourage, God. Lord God, if we are bound, oh Lord God, we look unto you as you that set the captive free, Lord God. You fling open the doors of the prison, God. And oh, Father, if we are, Lord God, Oh, this God, you give us encouragement, God. Lord, if we are, Lord God, not save God. Lord God, if, Lord God, we need, Lord God, your deliverance and salvation, God. You did it for us at the cross of Calvary. So, Father, we ask, oh, Lord God, that you bless the worship, God. Let it be acceptable before you, God. Let it be, Lord God, a sweet, salt, and incense, God, that brings pleasure to you, Lord God. And, Father, be with us, Lord God. We do not want to worship without you, Lord God. We want you to be the center of our worship, Lord God. We want you to be the reason that we praise you, Lord God. And Father, we ask, Lord God, that as the worship and the praise goes up, God, that the blessing come upon your people. Bless this neighborhood, God. Bless the street, the passerby, Lord God. We lift them up before you, God. And we give you all the praise, the glory and the honor, Lord God. For we know, Lord God, that we're going to say, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done in our lives. We thank you with expectation, Lord God. In your name, we ask and we pray. And all God people say, Amen. and all God people say, lift up your hand and praise His name this morning. Hallelujah.
You just meditate in him right now. That's right. Just meditate in Jesus right now. Lord, we meditate in you, Father. We glorify your name, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your blessings, Lord. We thank you for your blessings, Lord Jesus. Come on, how many of you can thank him today? Come on, how many of you can thank our Father today? Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shout it in your car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is amazing. God is extraordinary. He's wonderful. We're going to take our tithings and offerings. Vamos a tomar nuestro tiempo, nuestra ofrenda. So get ready to give to the Lord. Prepárate para dar al Señor. So all the ushers, I mean the security, get ready to um, collect the offerings. Amen. As we continue with one more song. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Good, While I was praying, somebody touched me. While I was praying.
We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 How many of you can shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. All the way in the back. Shout hallelujah back there all over. Glory to God. God is good. All the time. God is good. All the time. Dios es bueno, bien bueno, bien bueno. Oh, por el Pentecostal de Noyami. Man, I can keep on going, boy. Keep going. Oh, praise God. Amen. Praise God, praise God. I love you all, people. Happy Father's Amen. Day to all the dads out there. To you too. Hallelujah. Amen. I know the moms, single moms, want you to say Happy Father's Day today, but no, you can only be a mom or a dad. Amen. Well, Happy Father's Day to all these handsome guys that we have here in our church. Amen. And the ones that look like me even more. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We love you, everybody that's watching through Facebook, YouTube. We love you. God bless you. Welcome to ATN's um, parking lot service. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We are actually having a revival out here. Amen. Um, there's something about being out here reminds me of the tent. Oh my Everybody God. that remembers the tent. Glorious tent. Amen, right? Just Glorious reminds tent. you of the tent. It used yes. to be, oh, I loved it. Amen. And I love, the reason you like being outside because it's beautiful. You can oh, look up, Lord, enjoy. The the Amen. If the shower comes down, I need it right now anyway. Amen. Amen. So, praise Lord, God. I want to welcome everyone and I want to tell you to... Keep on giving, sigue andando, to the kingdom of God. Thank you for the fan, Carter. You're magical. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Um, and keep on giving to the church. Amen. We need your help. Believe me, we need your help. Amen. Um, today's Dad's Day, and I wanted to preach a message on dads. Now, I did preach on Mother's Day, a Mother's Day, because moms is a whole different world. Amen. I went to the drugstore. How many went to get a car for your husbands or your your brothers, sisters, all they had was a little piece like this for Father's Day. That's all right. They had 30 cards on one. That's all right. The mothers take over the entire place. Dad's only one. Come on, preach it now. The truth is But can I tell you, dads are important. How many of you know dads are important? Los padres son importantes. Fuimos a la farmacia y casi no había lugar para... Lo que había un cantito para los padres. Amen. And um, and I realized, me di de cuenta, de dads, que los padres sometimes are underestimated. So uh, is God. And, and the reason that that happens, the razón que eso pasa, is because so many dads, hay tanto padre, who are not there, que no están ahí. They're not there for your children, que no están por los hijos. But may I tell you, there is a lot of us that are here. Hay muchos de nosotros que estamos aquí. We are good dads. I'm a good dad. Just someone went by all the good dads. Say, I'm a good dad. Hey Amen. All the fathers out there, you're a good dad. Don't let nobody underestimate you. No deja que nada, nadie te tenga por abajo. Tú eres un buen padre. And being a dad is important to God. Ser un padre es importante para Dios. It's important to the Lord. Why? Because dads were made first. That's right. Los papás fuimos hechos primero. Amen. ¿Cuántos no saben eso? Amen. We were made first. That's right, Adam. That's right. Adam was made first. Amen. Dads are made first. Why? Because he's our dad also. He's our heavenly father. And then nuestro padre celestial. And so, I'm just going to, in the minutes that I'm going to be with you, you know how much my minutes are, right? Amen. So in the time period I'm going to be with you, Amen. I want to preach a message called a dad of influence. Un padre de influencia. And I'm going to speak about a person you probably rarely hear about. Voy a hablar de un padre que usted posiblemente no ha escuchado mucho de él. But I want to start out with this first in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Primera de Corintios, capítulo 13, versículo 11. It says, cuando yo era niño, when I was a child, hablaba como niño, I spoke like a child. Pensaba como niño, I thought like a child. Jugaba como niño, I judged like a child. Pero cuando ya fui hombre, but when I became a man, say with me, a man. I left the childish things behind. Dejé la cosa de niño atrás. In other words, when I became a man, I left the childish things behind. I'm no longer, no longer a child. And when I speak to men, cuando yo le hago a los hombres, 
I say to men, I got two boys in my house and both of them are amazing fathers. Amen. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. If you go out, you can get a tan. Everybody that's been talking about my beautiful tan, it's because I'm out here. So get out of your car and go like this. Amen. Um, I got good, I got a son-in-law that's an amazing dad. I got two boys that are amazing dads. But you know how you learn to be a dad? You learn it from your dad. ¿Sabe cómo te aprende a ser un buen padre? Tú lo aprendes con tu, con tu propio, propio padre. And the Bible says that you, once you grow up, you got to start leaving the little kid things away. I know we change our little toys to big toys. Right? Isn't that right, Pierce? You used to like the little trucks. Now you like the big trucks. Amen. As men, como hombre, sometimes we do things that we did when we were little. And God's trying to tell us, Dios está tratando de decirnos a nosotros to change the way you do things. Que cambiemos la manera que hacemos las cosas. Stop thinking like a child. Stop judging like a child. And become a man and leave your foolish things behind. Dejamos de ser como un niño y vamos a dejar las cosas necias atrás. Okay. I'm going to talk to you about a guy who carried the cross of Jesus. Voy a hablarle de un hombre que cargó la cruz de Jesús. And you would wonder, who is this guy? ¿Quién es este hombre? Because hardly anybody speaks about this dad. Casi no, nadie habla de este papá. Él no quería cargar la cruz. Él no sabía quién era. He didn't know who he was. But look what happens. When you read the Bible, cuando tú lees la Biblia, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Mateo, Marco, Luke, and Juan, the Bible rarely mentions anybody's kids. La Biblia es raro que mencione los hijos de nadie. But this man, Simon, este hombre, Simón, the Bible says that a man was going by and he was a father. Why even say that? ¿Por qué decirle era un padre? ¿Para qué mencionarlo como padre? Why say that he was a father? See, any time the Bible writes something, every time something's written in the Bible, cuando algo está escrito en la Biblia, es because something is going to happen in the future that needs to be mentioned in the past. And the Bible says that he, he was the father and mentions the kid's name. It just didn't say the father of two boys. It mentions Alexander and Rufo. Alexander and Rufo. He was the dad of two kids. It's like me saying, I am the dad of Timothy and Jeremiah. Think about that. I am the dad of Timothy, Jeremiah, and of course Miriam, which is right in front of me. Amen? Now think about that. Why did the Bible do this? Because it's important to understand that there are moments of obligation in your life. Hay momento de obligación en tu vida. And God says to you, Dios te dice a ti, if you're going to be a father, si tú vas a ser un padre, be a good dad, ser un buen padre. Be a good father. Do you know the reason why the angel, when he saw Gideon, and Ángel cuando veo a Gideon, he said, you brave. You awesome man, tu hombre grande, hombre poderoso. He said, you're a man of valor, tu un hombre de valor. Why do you think he said that to Gideon? Gideon tells the angel, you talking about me? Tu estás hablando de mí? Am I? I'm not brave. I'm hiding in here. Yo estoy escondido aquí. I'm just trying to get some food for my family. Solamente estoy tratando de coger comida por mi familia. Notice, the angel picked and I'm here for you, the dad, el papá, who dare not let his children suffer of hunger. Que no dejó sus hijos sufrir del hambre. And he made that man, hizo ese hombre, a giant, un gigante, who defeated the armies of the Midianites. Que derrotó los ejércitos de Medianito. Which proves to you, te dice, the good dads, bueno padre, are mighty dads, son padres poderoso. They're incredible dads, son padres increíbles. Don't let society, no diga, no deja que la sociedad put you down, que te pongan abajo. No, if you're a dad, walk around and say, I am proud of who I am. Yo tengo orgullo de quien yo soy. I am a dad, yo soy un papá. The Bible mentions dad, la Biblia menciona a los papás, why? ¿Por qué? Because dads are important. Los padres son importantes. Watch this. He says, he says, a certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander Rufus, was passing by. 
on his way from the country and they forced him to carry the cross. So if you're writing things down, why does the Bible take time to mention dads, to mention children? Because I'm gonna show you something. This, imagine if your dad would have been the one carrying the cross. Imagínate si tu papá fue el que cargó la cruz. There is no bigger story in history than the cross. No hay una historia más grande de la historia como la cruz. The cross is what we're here for. Amen. La cruz es porque estamos aquí. Yes. We're here because there was a Jesus, the Son of God, who died on the cross of Calvary. Porque había un Cristo, Hijo de Dios, que murió en la cruz del Calvario. The reason we're here is about Jesus. La razón que estamos aquí es sobre Jesucristo. Yes. It's the greatest moment in history. Yes. Es la historia más grande en el mundo. En la historia no hay historia como la de Cristo. Could you imagine if you would be part of that story? Yes. Si tú pudieras ser parte de esa historia. I don't, don't, don't do anything else but listen to what I'm about to tell you. Simon did not realize. Simon no se dio de cuenta. That not only was he carrying the cross. Que no solamente estaba cargando la cruz. He also had the blood of Jesus on him. Tenía la sangre de Cristo sobre él. As he carried the cross, mientras cargaba la cruz, the blood of Jesus, la sangre de Cristo, that was in the cross, que estaba en la cruz, was on him also, estaba sobre él. But not only that, his two kids, Rufus and Alexander, Rufus y Alejandro, were also following daddy. Estaban siguiendo al papá. Watch this, his two boys. Say with me, his two boys. Su dos niños. I bet you didn't, I guarantee you, you never saw this story before. His two boys followed Jesus to Golgotha. Los dos hijos siguieron a Jesús al Calvario. Rufus carried the cross. Um, Simon carried the cross. Simon cargando la cruz. And Rufus and Alexander following daddy. Siguiendo a papá. They followed them all the way. All the way. Los siguieron todo el camino hasta el Golgotha. Now, what an experience that was. Que experiencia fue esa? To be able to watch, poder velar, the whole scenery, la escena entera of the cross of Calvary, de la cruz del Calvario. Two little boys, dos niños, following their dad, siguiendo el papá. That's that powerful. How I many you know that's powerful? Amen. How many can say amen out there? Amen. To see daddy, vea papá. As he went to the cross, I could see Jesus, poder ver a Jesús, turning around, da la vuelta, looking at Simon, mirar a Simón, and say to him, decirle, thank you, gracias, thank you for helping me, gracias por ayudarme to carry my cross all the way to Golgotha. Can you imagine that experience? And I imagine Simon looking at him, and said, I went all the way to the cross for you. Fui hasta la cruz contigo. So I'm going to stay. Me voy a quedar. And I will be a witness. He said, un testigo of the greatest thing that ever happened in history. De la cosa más grande que ha pasado en la historia. Jesus dying for the sins of the world. Jesús morir por la, oh my God, por los pecados del mundo. That's extraordinary. Eso es extraordinario. I want you to praise God where you're at. Lord. Just praise him right there where you're at. Praise the Lord. To be able to be there. Amen. To be able to be in Golgotha. And he watched, they watched everything he did. Velaron todo lo que hicieron. Simon became an example of sacrifice. Dads are the example of sacrifice. I can tell you right now, there is. I'm a jack of all trades. How many jack of all trades we have here? There's nothing I can do roofing. I can do carpentry. I can do plumbing, electricity. As long as I got that tape, what is it called? Yeah, as long as I got that tape, I can put plumbing together. Right? Duct tape. As long as I have duct tape, I can put anything together. No, I'm just kidding. I can do everything. Carpentry, I can do. And every time I did it, I would take my boys with me. Me llevaba mi niño conmigo. 
And they learn how to do it also. Aprendieron a hacerlo. They learn by what? By example. Aprendieron por qué? Por ejemplo. They know carpentry. Saben carpintería. They know how to put simple plumbing together. They know how to do electricity. Why? Because they saw their dad do it. It's important, dads. Importante, papás. To be an example. Ser un ejemplo. To be an example. They can cook their own food. Pueden cocinar su propia comida. Why? Because dad can cook his own food. They can iron their own clothes. Wash their own clothes. Why? Because dad can do the same thing. And I show them that there's no job that cannot be done. No hay trabajo que no pueda ser hecho. Why? Because as fathers, como padres, we need to teach our kids and our boys that someday they're going to be dads and someday they're going to be husbands. And it's not their, their, their wife's job to be doing everything in the house. You can get up too and wash the dishes. You can get up and iron the clothes. You can get up and wash the clothes. You can mop the floor too. I don't know how many men do that. How many mop the floor and do all this stuff. You should be able to do everything. And you should teach your children as an example that there's no job too little. No hay trabajo pequeño. Todo trabajo importante. Enseñenlo a cocinar, a lavar, hacerlo todo. That's what God called us to do. Now watch, as I finish the story. The Bible says, la Biblia dice, that all of a sudden, Simon the father disappears from history. Simon says, Se desaparece la historia. But guess who stays in history? ¿Sabe quién se mantiene la historia? The two boys. The two boys. Alexander and Rufus. Some reason or something. The impact of their father, el impacto de su papá. The fact that their father took them to the cross. El papá lo llevó a la cruz. They went to Golgotha. Fueron a Golgotha. Right. They saw him when he said the yes. seven words. Lo vieron cuando dieron las siete palabras. The gospel, el evangelio, Preach. got into their hearts and thrown su corazón. Preach. The power of God, el poder de Dios, got into their heart. Llegó su corazón. Why? Because there was a dad, but había un papá who was willing, que estaba dispuesto to be an example, un ejemplo a la vida de ellos, to their lives. Man, that's powerful. Think about that. All there is is one verse about the dad. But the children go in history. Los hijos, los hijos entran en historia as men of God como hombre de Dios. Rufus and Alexander. Man, there's nothing like watching your kids graduate. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Nothing like watching them graduate from school. Isn't that powerful? It's a father also. Nothing like watching them going to college. Ir al colegio, graduarse del colegio. When they buy their first house, yeah. cuando compran la primera casa. Yes. And you're there helping your kids move in. That's right. You're helping them get everything ready. That's right. Man, that's powerful. Eso poderoso. Ayudar a tus hijos. Comprar su primera casa. Entrar en su casa. I don't know. To me, the best feeling in the world is when I see my children do better than I can do. Lo más grande hay cuando mis hijos hacen mejor que lo que yo hago. That's right. That should be the desire in your heart. Esa debe ser el deseo en tu corazón. That every one of your children, que cada uno de sus hijos, will be greater and more powerful and more awesome than you are. Amen. That they'll go in history, que vayan a la historia, as kids who now are doing, they'll say, listen, that's Pastor Jeremiah's kids. That's Pastor Max's kids. Oh, God. Isn't that powerful? Yes, Lord. Because guess what? They'll always be your kids. They can be 30 and 40 years old. Pero en 30, 40, 50 años, siempre van a ser tu bebé. They will always be your babies. They will always be your kids. And every moment that they conquer, you conquer. And forget it when the grandchildren come. How many got grandchildren? Those grandchildren just beat you up. How many can say amen to that? Amen to that. Right, you go. Oh, my dear. Those grandchildren twist you around. Oh, pastor. They make you do whatever they want to do. It's another dimension. You don't have to worry. You spoil them and send them home. Yes. 
You don't have to whip them. You don't have to do anything. You just give, give, give. But you know that the only way that can happen because I just watched my granddaughter graduate in the top of her class. My first one. My first one, Sarah. Amen. Graduate. And all those strings she has, she had more strings on her than honors. Graduated out of high school with two years of college. Praise the Lord. That means that she did better than her mother and did better than her father. But her mother did better than her father. See how every generation goes on. Your job is to make the next generation be more powerful than the generation that just passed. Tu trabajo es que la próxima generación sea más poderosa que la generación que pasó. That's when you're a good father. That's when you've made a good influence on your children. Es cuando tú has hecho una buena influencia en tus hijos. It's to see the next generation yes. be greater. Yes. And I can't wait till she graduates as a doctor. Oh, yes. So I'm going to push, push the parents out. I didn't know I'm the grandfather. Amen. That's right. That's see, the right. grandfather. Grandfather. Father right. is not the same as grand. That's right. Grandfather. That's right. Yo soy el abuelo. The transcendental father. That's powerful. The it's father. a poderoso. Right? Now imagine, Simon dies, but Rufus and Alexander became powerful people in the gospel. And you can look it up, because I'm not going to burden you with a lot of stuff, but you can look it up in Acts chapter 19, 30 and 33, and you see Alexander to Alejandro. Paul's about to preach in Ephesus. Pablo está para predicar en Ephesus. And they're trying to stop him, de pararlo, from preaching the gospel, de predicar el evangelio. And here comes Alexander. Say with me, Alexander. Alexander. Alexander, Simon's kid. Here comes Alexander, and he steps in history. Se mete la historia. He gets in between all the Jews and the Ephesus. And they say, he, and he makes a proclamation for Paul. He was willing to die. Estaba dispuesto a morir por lo que él creyó. Why? Because he learned it from his father. Lo aprendió de su papá. That's right. The Bible says, La Biblia dice, in Romans chapter 16, verse 32, 13. See, can I tell you that because there was no Bible written back then, there was only the Old Testament. So everything you knew that happened was because somebody told you. Alguien te dijo que pasó. The whole story of the cross, la historia entera de la cruz, was brought down because someone spoke it to the next person. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. They only wrote what they saw. Escribieron lo que vieron through the Holy Spirit, a través del Espíritu Santo. This is supernatural. Esto es supernatural. Because in Romans chapter 16, verse 13, Romano 16, versículo 13. And I'm going to finish with this so that you can go home and have your steak, your Father's Day steak. Para que se pueda ir a la casa de su bistec de Día los Padres, or maybe your cornflakes. I don't know. Maybe that's all you're going to get for Father's Day is cornflakes. But watch. I, I don't care because I got invited over Carter's house and he's making steaks for me. Just kidding. <laughs> but the Romans says that Paul is, is giving salutation to his people. And Romano, Pablo le está dando salutación a su pueblo. And he says, please say thank you to Rufus. Dame las gracias a Rufus. Remember, Rufus was on the cross with his dad. Now Paul is thanking his son for being the great man he was. For being the one that could tell the story. Ahora Pablo le está dando gracias a Rufus. Por ser el hombre grande y poderoso que fue. Why? Because the father did it. Not only Rufus. But the mother is now included in this story. La mamá es incluida en esta historia. And Paul says. Thank Rufus. And thank his mom. Because his mom is my mom. Porque la mamá de ella. Es mi mamá. Watch this. The man takes the cross all the way to Calvary. Simón lleva la cruz al Calvario. And it's so influential 
that his children become supernatural. So see, hijos son supernatural. But not only his children, but his wife that was not there. But by influence, but influencia of the father, all of a sudden, Simon's wife became the mother of Paul. Vino a ser la mamá de Pablo. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Isn't that amazing? That what one man did, lo que un hombre hizo, influenced an entire family, una familia entera. That's right. Paul is saying, Simon, your wife has become my mom. That's amazing. Yes. I've had, other than my mom, I had another woman that was like my mom. Her daughters are here. Her name was Dionila Costa. She was like my mom. In fact, when I first got married, the first week I got married, la primera semana que me casé, there she was knocking on my door. Amen. Tocando mi puerta. To find out how I was doing. Yes. I'm embarrassed because it's the first week of my marriage. Era mi primera semana, and she invaded my house, invadió mi casa. And I'm going like, Mom, you could have waited a month. That's right, I'm telling you about it. Tu pedías esperar un mes. No, that first week, vine a traerle cosas para cocinar. I came to bring you stuff so you can cook, and I said, we already got things to cook. Why are you here? Porque tu estás aquí. I'm just making sure you're okay. Really? My mom hasn't come yet. Mi mamá no ha venido todavía. How many of you have ever had somebody in your life other than your mom that she is so much, so close to your heart, tan cerca de tu corazón, that she invades your space, invade tu espacio, because she loves you so much that she cares about everything that happens to you. This was Simon's wife. She became the mom of all the disciples. Vino a ser la mamá de todos los discípulos. Why? Because her husband was a great influence. Porque su esposo fue una gran influencia. And when you become a great influence, everybody in your household, todo el mundo en tu casa, become an influence to the world. Viene a ser una influencia al mundo entero. You're going to have to stop and start saying, God, what can I do so that my children will follow me? ¿Qué puedo yo hacer para que mis hijos me sigan? As I finish this, I'm going to do an example for you. This week, I spoke to a young man. Hablaba con un muchacho esta semana. And he said to me, the reason I'm waiting five more minutes is because my tan is getting better. Um, but he said to me, he said, I, he said, I said to him, how are you doing? ¿Cómo tú estás? And he said, Pastor, I came out of jail a month ago. Salí de la casa un mes atrás. I said, what? Do you care? He said, yeah, pastor. They caught me selling drugs. Me cogieron vendiendo droga. And I said, but, but Papa, you were in church with us. Estaba en la iglesia con nosotros. He said, I know. I know, but something happened to me. Algo me pasó. I needed money. Necesitaba dinero. And so I figured the easiest way to do it, la más fácil manera de hacerlo, was to go out and sell it. Y e venderlo. Then I said, Papa, we have been an example to your life. He said, yeah, but my dad was a bad example to my life. His dad had been in and out of jail. Su papá estaba dentro de la casa saliendo, selling drugs all the time. And that's all the kids saw. So fue todo lo que el niño vio as he grew up. And every time he needed money, the father said, I know what I'm going to do, sell drugs. So guess what the son did? The same thing he saw the father do. And as I held him in my hand, I held him in my arms. I told him, listen, you need to stop this in the name of Jesus. You need to find a new father example in your life. Tú necesitas encontrar un nuevo padre en tu vida. You need to find the heavenly father. Tú necesitas encontrar el padre celestial. You need to change your ways. Tienes que cambiar tu manera de vivir. You cannot be influenced by what your father did. If you had a bad father, listen, you have a good father. You got your heavenly father in heaven. Follow his example. Siga el ejemplo de Dios. Remember, all the dads that are here, you are the influence for the next generation and the following generation and the following generations. Every time I tell my granddaughters I'm going to move to Florida, they say, you ain't going nowhere. That's right. Take your granddaughters. You know what that means? I ain't going nowhere. That's 
Cada vez que le digo a mis, a, mis, a, mis, a mis nietas, me voy para la Florida, ella dice, tú no te vas para ningún sitio. We came here following you. That's what they tell me. We came here following you. Vinimos siguiéndote a ti. I said, guess what then? I'm stuck here. Amen. Because I can't go nowhere. Why? We thank you, Lord. Because you live by what? You live by example. That's right. If you're going to be a good father, si vas a ser un buen padre, live by example. Live loving your children. Live reading your word. Live praying at home in front of them. Ora con ellos. Lee la Biblia con ellos. My, my granddaughter Lily the other day told the father. The father said something sarcastic to me. Papa dijo algo sarcástico. And Lily says, don't talk to Papa like that. He's the one that talks to God. Can you imagine that? No le habla Papa si él es el que habla con Dios. He said, he talks to God. You can't talk to him like that. That means that if you live by example, your children and your children's children's children will live by example. Si vive por ejemplo, tus hijos, tu nieto, tu nieta, tu familia, generaciones después, servirán a Jehová. They will serve God. That is the promise of God to you, fathers. Your generation after generation will be children who serve the Lord. Can you bow your heads right there where you're at? Father, we come before you. We thank you. You're an awesome God. You're an amazing God. You're an extraordinary God. Thank you, God, because you helped me make it through the day. Thank you for making me a dad. Gracias por hacerme un padre. Thank you for allowing me to be an example to my children. Para ser ejemplo a mis hijos. Thank you, God, because they are following you. Porque ellos te están siguiendo a ti. Te doy gracias. Because the next generation will be a greater generation. Porque la próxima generación será una generación más grande. God, I thank you because if you detain yourself from coming, there's a new God, a new generation of powerful men and women. Hay una generación grande, poderosa de hombres y mujeres that are coming. That the gates of hell should not prevail against them. Que las puertas del infierno no podrán contra ellos. God, I thank you, Señor, te doy gracias. Because you're preparing our next generation. Está preparando la nueva próxima generación. And it doesn't matter what we see in the streets of, of this country. No, no importa lo que vemos en las calles. In this país. What matters is what we see in our homes. Que vemos nuestra casa. If we bring them right, if we instruct them right, si lo traemos bien, si lo instruimos bien, they may leave for a while. Puede que se vayan por un tiempo, but they all will come back. Todos volverán otra vez to serve you, God, para servirte. Lord God, bless our fathers. Bendice nuestro padre. God bless them mightily. Que bendícelo poderosamente. I thank you in Jesus' name. Le doy gracias en el nombre de Jesús. And God, if anyone today, si alguien hoy, wants to receive you as your personal Savior, quiere recibirte como su Salvador personal. Lord God, we say together, God, I receive you in my life. Señor, te recibo en mi vida. Forgive my sins. Perdona mi pecado. Wash me in your blood. Lávame en tu sangre. Write my name in the book of life. Escribe mi nombre en el libro de la vida. I thank you, God, because I'm yours, God. Te doy gracias porque soy tuyo. Right now, if you receive Jesus and you're in YouTube or you're, you're in Facebook, give thanks, God, right now for all God has done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God, amen. Praise the Lord. Now, as we go out, don't leave. All the fathers, we got gifts for every dad. Tenemos regalos para todos los padres. Amen. So don't you leave without your gifts. And we got over 40 half gallons of milk. How many? A hundred? A hundred half gallons of milk. If, if you can take some milk home, please do. And we got a lot of peanut butter and jelly. If you want peanut butter and jelly, sandwiches, take them home. Okay, we got tons of it. So we got enough for you to take five gallons, five half gallons, six. So please don't leave. You're going to be going this way, right? Am I right? And you're going to be receiving. So nobody goes out that way. Everybody goes through here. And we're going to force you like we, 